welcome to Wednesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic in what I suspect might be a very, very long video. For today, I'm going to be attempting this puzzle on screen, which is called Yin Yang by Jesper, Jesper Josephson. Um, and Jesper's puzzles are always fantastic. And I think this might be the puzzle that we've had recommended to us the most of any puzzle in our history. This has been absolutely lauded to the rafters. It is apparently absolutely extraordinary, um, but you know, great setters and solvers like KNT said it took them three hours to solve. So <laughs> I'm expecting this to be probably the longest video that we've ever made, if indeed I can solve it. Um, I have read the rules and they strike me as utterly ridiculous. Um, um, but anyway, I'm, that's what I'm going to try and do today. Uh, I knew this would be a long video if I managed to solve the puzzle, so I have allowed myself extra time um, <laughs> in order to hopefully record a successful solve. We shall see. Um, before I do read you those rules, though, I've got a couple of things to mention. I have actually recorded a bonus video um, of me solving some of the daily pencil puzzles from the Discord server. These are wonderful little vignettes. Uh, sort of 10 minute puzzles, beautiful, beautiful things. Um, and the guys over there were kind enough to send me a list of their favorite five puzzles from the last few months. Um, so I've recorded a video where I solve those and probably if I get a chance, I'll release that on the channel tomorrow morning. So look out for that if you're interested in pencil puzzles. And if you're watching this video, why wouldn't you be interested in pencil puzzles? They are fantastic things. Um, other than that, uh, I need to say congratulations to some more of you who've managed to solve Joseph Namer's Sudoku Hunt. Now that's available at the moment over on Patreon. It has been getting the most incredible plaudits and very well done to the following who have solved all 13 of those equal sum lines puzzles. Um, Gray Kanarek, um, Eric Snell, Charlie Skeera, Stephen Williams, Joseph Costal, um, Grufty. <laughs> um, Akash Kansel, uh, Chesik, Nicholas Owl, Todd Warnken, Anne Marie Dehaan, uh, Esmeralda will be proud, Anne Marie, um, Jake Ferenc, Cone de Vilt, Justin Kidman, Harrison Beer, uh, John Andrew McCulloch, and Tran Chi Hui. Uh, I hope I'm saying that last one correctly. I did my best, I promise. Um, so yeah, all fantastic, all correct. Very well done indeed. Now, let us start this puzzle. <laughs> let me read you these rules, they are mad. Um, divide the grid into regions. So you can see normally in Sudoku, we get three by three regions. In this puzzle, no such luck. Um, we've got to divide the grid into regions, each consisting of nine orthogonally connected cells. Each row, column, and region must contain the digits one to nine once each. Shade some cells so th these conditions are all fulfilled. All shaded cells are connected. All unshaded cells are connected. No two by two area is fully shaded or fully unshaded. And each region is either fully shaded or fully unshaded. The digit in a cell with one or more arrows is equal to the total number of shaded cells that appear in the indicated directions combined, not including the arrow cell itself. Not all possible arrows stroke arrow combinations are given. Oh my goodness me. So let's, let's take a look at this cell. That seems to be the only cell that's got four arrows in it. So what if we, let, let's put a, I don't know, let's put a five in there just for the sake of exposition. What that, that five would be saying, I think, is that in these cells, these cells, this cell and those cells combined. So in all of those purple cells, there would be a sum total of five shaded cells. So therefore, all the others, I suppose, are unshaded. That's the corollary of that. Um, and let's, in fact, now let's abandon our purplification of the grid and think about these yin-yang rules because this is, it strikes me, yin-yang is a very popular uh, logic puzzle. Um, and 
this rule set appears to me to be very very faithful to the to the classic yin yang puzzle type so what we're being told is we've got to divide the grid into basically you know two areas one of which i'm just going to draw in some stuff here i'm probably going to fail actually whoops um let's imagine that i need to make sure there are no two by twos in the area that's left behind yeah so let's imagine that they were the shaded cells and let's imagine that these were the unshaded cells and let's revisit the yin yang rules to see if we have we have met these so what we've got to do is have all shaded cells connected well all the purple cells are connected um, all the unshaded cells all the green cells you can see they are also orthogonally connected no two by two area is fully shaded or fully unshaded that I think is true I don't think we've got any two by twos filled with one color um, and then if this was the pattern in this grid we would then be being told that each region so each of our nine cell regions in the puzzle has to be constructed so actually that's quite interesting isn't it if this was correct the top row would have to be a region and then the next region would delve down like that the next region would sort of twist around the corner uh, is that nine cells yes and the next region would do this and one two three four five oh i thought i was going to be correct then i was going to be amazed but no this this is not the correct pattern perhaps unsurprisingly because um that is could only be an eight cell region and it would need to be a nine cell region so this is not the correct pattern no surprises there but i think that's how the rules work now do have a go um the way to play is to click the link under the video i would suggest if you do have a go that um, you allow yourself some considerable time to solve this everybody who solved it says it takes a long time but now i get to play let's get cracking and see how we can solve this puzzle so my temptation when we start here is to find arrows close to the edge like this one because presumably that can only see a maximum of three shaded if all three of those were shaded this would be a three so that must be a one two or a three um not seeing anything else that's bit well that one's quite near the edge that's got to be one two three or four i suppose i'm not seeing much else here this one well this one's got two arrows in it which is a little bit annoying but both of the directions it's pointing in are relatively close to the edge so that cannot be higher than four um but here's something here is something how could that be four well if it's four all of these cells would be shaded we have to discover we have to decide what we're going to use for shading let's use gray um so if this was a four and these were all shaded then how could there be an unshaded cell in this two by two in the corner and the answer is there can't be because that unshaded cell could never connect to any other unshaded cells in the puzzle and it's not possible for the whole of this top right region to be gray because then we'd have lots of two by twos in gray so but but the problem then is if we say there's no no unshaded cells down here these all have to be shaded and then they're all gray and now i've got a two by two of gray so this doesn't work so this is not four um this is i think a maximum of three three no, three would not give us a problem because any greens in here we can then escape with without leaving a two by two behind. So this cell is perhaps the most interesting we've found so far. Um, wow, there's not much else that's really close to the edge, I don't think. That one is obviously close to two edges, but then it's got an arrow pointing this way rather annoyingly. That one has got to be one two three four or five it only sees five cells beneath it hmm right it might be that we have to think about things like these two cells because they are looking 
at an awful lot of the same cells. What do I mean by that? Well, look at these two cells. I'll just make these cells blue for a moment. The arrows in them are pointing to uh, sets of cells that include these purple cells. These purple cells are common to both of these arrows. These arrows are going to count the number of grey cells in the purple um, in both directions. So if there were three grey cells in this purple strip, that would could contribute three to this one's total and three to this one's total. So what that's telling us is that this domino here and this domino here must have a different number of shaded cells in them. Because imagine there was one shaded cell up there in this domino and one shaded cell in that domino at the bottom. Well, then these two arrows have the same total. We don't know what that total is, but it would be the same. So I think that's quite interesting. I don't see really how to use it immediately, but I'm, I think we're going to have to keep track of places where we need an inequality in shaded cells. But I think I'm going to have to start re um, labeling cells that can be one of five, like I did with this one. That can also be one to five, look. I wouldn't have thought the idea of the puzzle is to label every single cell. That would seem, well, it would seem unlikely to be helpful. There must be a cell in here somewhere that is under, maybe it's this one, that's under surprising pressure. Right, so this one is pointing in two directions that in theory could contain lots of shaded cells. But this digit obviously can't be greater than nine. So that means that there must be some unshadedness. Well, that's not very surprising. Oh. Ah, okay. I've just had a thought about the nature of yin-yang puzzles. Let's just... Yeah, okay. Let me just talk about that for a second or two. Um, let's think about the perimeter of a puzzle that has yin-yang characteristics and ask how many contiguous sequences there can be in the perimeter. And by a contiguous sequence, I mean how many times can we change color? So if we're, what are we saying? We're gonna use gray for shaded. So if we go gray for shaded and then green for unshaded, could we ever do something like that? And the answer is no because the moment that you have more than two colors or more yeah more than two stretches of color in the perimeter you have a problem which is how do you connect these grays together or how do we connect the greens together and the answer is it doesn't matter but you know the grays have to connect together so however you connect them together you're isolating the greens from each other and that means that however we however we plot the perimeter of this grid is going to be a set of shaded cells and a set of unshaded cells you know and there's only going to be one of each um, so I was just thinking then that this clue well it can't be a zero it can't be a zero, can it? So there must be some shaded cells in, well, I suppose it does, there, doesn't, there don't actually have to be shaded cells in both directions. But there must be, some, there must be a shaded cell in that sequence of digits, or that sequence of cells. And there must also be unshaded cells in this sequence of cells. So, but we've got to make sure. Yeah, so imagine this cell was shaded and this cell was unshaded. But 
Then we'd sort of know that any unshadedness in the perimeter must extend from here. And any unsh unshadedness must extend this way. And we couldn't have interruptions anywhere else. Um, okay, I'm not sure what that means, but I think that there, I think there's something about this cell. This cell feels interesting. Okay, it can't be this one, can it? I mean, this one is tempting because it's the only four cell arrow, but I think actually this cell is horrible because it basically it's looking in so many directions. Ah, those two are looking at each other and they have an awful lot of commonality. Right, let's think about that just for a second or two. So these two arrows look at each other and they both count all of those purples. So there must be an inequality in terms of these two cells. However many cells of these two are shaded must be different to the total. To, so if that was shaded, if this one was shaded, either both of these would be shaded or they'd both be unshaded. If this is unshaded, then at least one of these must be shaded. Okay, no, sorry, I thought that might be interesting, but no. This is very tricky. I don't actually see how to start this. I think it's interesting for sure. I don't really like any of these cells that have two arrows in, apart from that one. That felt like that might be the break-in. I might come back and think about that in a moment. That's another five cell. That's only got a count of five. That's only got a count of five as well. Ah. Ah, that one is looking in the same direction as this one. Ah. Right. Right, this is the best we've got so far. Because now... Whatever this is, any cells in this strip, any shaded cells in this strip of, of, of purples, give us the count of this cell. But obviously this, uh, whatever's in there, is also counting those. And yet this must be a different digit to this, which means at least one of these two cells is shaded. So, so now do, do we get to use this one then? If we know that at least one of these two is shaded. So this domino here has at least one shaded cell in it in order to ensure this has a different count to this. Yeah, so can't I say something like, look, look at that cell. That's saying that there is a non-zero count of shaded cells in that string of digits. So imagine that there was a shaded cell here. Now I have to connect whichever one of these is shaded to this along the perimeter. So I either have to go that way or I have to go that way. Right. So, hmm, is it true to say then, I feel like it is true to say that either this column is totally shaded or this column is totally shaded. But, but let me just think about this. There's definitely a shaded cell in one of these two. There's definite, even if this shaded cell, even if this was a one and it was only that cell that was shaded, how do I connect this cell to this cell, given this thing about the perimeter only having two strings of digits in it? Well, either this comes up here and connects there, and then it could go round again, but it must, you know, either it does that or it comes round the other way and gets here, in which case it takes that whole string of digits. So one of the Right, either column one or column nine is completely shaded. 
which one of those is broken? Um, that one actually is saying there's definitely a shaded cell in this column. So if you have a totally shaded column, oh, if that was totally shaded, what would this number be? Oh, what would that number be? Right, this might be where it breaks then. Uh, let me just think about this. If this was a con continuously shaded segment, this digit is therefore an 8. Ah, uh, but that could be... Well, that would have to be 9. Because it can't be 8, but it clearly does count all of those 8 cells. So, that actually doesn't look like it's broken rather annoyingly. Um, so, this then could be... Well, depends. depends how this one moves, doesn't it? But, all right, let's have a look at this instead. If that's all gray, then this cell would be a, that would be a seven. Sorry, I know I'm, I'm just being silent now, but that's because I can't really understand how this is going to... I feel like this is quite important, but I don't really understand how to make it break in one of the directions. It's really constrained. This is probably going to be correct, is my feeling, because it, it gives us two digits. One of these would be grey. Gray. Some something up here has to be grey as well from this one so something up here is grey ah okay ah right it's broken wow okay this is very complicated indeed but it does this is broken with grey on the left Right, I think. The reason I reached that conclusion is that because if this is if this is all in, the only way it works is with an 8 here and a 9 here. Now, the, the corollary of that is that there must be a whole sequence of greens in the bottom row. Don't know where they are, but there must be some greens because this is saying there's only one grey cell in this direction. So there are some greens down here. Let's just put some greens in. Now, this is telling us that there are some greys in this sequence of digits. Now, let's put the absolute minimum number of greys in. Let's just put a grey in the corner there. There could be a grey here as well. But, but the, the point is that if, and there is, if there is a grey in this sequence, how do you connect it to this grey? We know it must connect because we know there's only one contiguous sequence of grey on the perimeter. And we can't come through the bottom of the grid because of the greens that we know must exist in the bottom. So we have to come all the way across the top. And that, I think, is broken for this reason. If this is a continuous sequence of grey, what number is going in there and what number is going in there? And the answer, I think, is five, whoops, five in both of them. That's counting those. This is counting these, so you can't have a stream, string of digits along the top of the grid. And that means... Well, that I think that means this is wrong. I don't see how you do it with a grade strip down the left. So my intuition, which was to say this is probably right, I think is inaccurate. I don't think it can be right. Let's just, let me just 
really really check that I think that's true I think it felt it felt convincing when I explained it to myself just now um, this would the only way this is going to be right is with an 8 here this therefore must be 9 because it can't be 8 there must therefore be greens here this is telling us there must be greys here these greys can't connect along the bottom, so they must connect along the top, which means the whole of the top row must be grey, and it can't be. That is, I think, fair. I think it's fair. So we can let's get rid of the grey. Let's get rid of the green. Let's greyify this column entirely now, because we need to connect whatever this is pointing at to this, and we now know we can't do that down the left-hand side of the grid. So we have now a whole sit. We have a digit. That cell there has to be a seven. Now, because we know one of these is grey, we've got to get this to touch one of these, don't we? That actually, let's get rid of the eight and the nine. They're they're obviously not right. I say obviously not right. I don't think they can be right because I don't think we can put that strip of grey in. Although now I'm wondering whether. No. Well, I'm wondering. I'm actually wondering whether we could do something like this, and have a green gap in the middle. That would correct these two. So maybe we can do both. I'm not sure about that. Um, hmm. Uh, anyway, let me. Right. In order to connect this grey to whichever one of these or both of these, which is grey, all of those have to clearly be grey, don't they? Now, hang on, hang on, hang on. Right, here's something interesting, I think. Re remember we worked out that we can't have grey in all of the top row? Well, that means there is some unshadedness in these four cells here. Now, there's only one sequence of unshadedness in the perimeter. So whichever one of these is green is going to have to continue on its way around the left hand side for as long as green goes down the left hand side, which could be. No, it can't be all the way down. I don't think there's much green in the perimeter of this puzzle. I just don't think there can be. Because whatever's green up here, this is telling us that there's a non-zero number of greys in this column. So, hmm, I'm getting very suspicious I've made a mistake now because I want to say that this is implying the whole of the bottom row is grey. Because how could it not be? It's not true to say that all of those cells are grey. That must be true. If all of these were grey, these two digits would have the same total. So there is a green in here. Or many greens. But it's also true to say that there is a grey somewhere in this string of digits. So let's put that grey as far away from this cell as we can to allow the green string to be as long as it possibly could be. That would put the grey there. If the grey is here, then to connect this grey to here, we know we've got to be going around this way because we can't come across the top because we'd have the problem with these two cells. So the furthest down the column we can put the grey is here, but we still have to connect along the bottom to connect this one to its friends. So I think the whole of the bottom row is grey. Now that means this cell is either 8 or 9. Because it's either counting exactly these cells, which there are 8 of, or it's counting another cell that appears in this column. So this has to be really small now. Because if this was a 9, there's one more grey cell in this string of digits. And this cell, which, which means that this can only possibly be seeing two cells. So this is a 1 or a 2. And most of this column is green. Wow. Oh, this, this digit, I know it. 
That's pointing at six. That's a six. Oh, at least I'm getting it. At least I'm getting started. That's that makes me hopeful. Hang on. What is that? Given that we know one of these is grey and we had to connect it to whatever was in this column, therefore we said all these were grey, that's got to be a 5. So this can't be a 5 now. So I thought I've got three digits now. That's not a 5 by Sudoku. What's this counting? This is counting this way. Oh, oh, ah, yin yang, yin yang. Right, we can't have two by twos that are full of um, the same colour in this puzzle. So that and that have both got to be unshaded. And that's two unshaded cells at last. Now, what can that be then? That cannot be four, because if that's four, all of these would be shaded. And we'd have two by twos of shading down here. So it's definitely not four. I'm not sure it can be three. If it's three, I don't know, maybe it can be three. If it can be three, if those two are shaded, and this one was unshaded. Right, okay. That's, that's fine, though. At least we've got somewhere now. So... I know, hang on, I know one of those is shaded, don't I? Because I need this to have a different total to this. Oh, so this... Right, so this is a maximum of seven now. That's six or seven. Because it's, it depends what, what, which of these is shaded. It could be both of them, in which case it reaches a count of seven, or it could be one of them. We know it's not zero of them, because then this would be a five. So this is quite a high number. And this one is counting this cell and whatever's shaded here. So it's at least a two. Now. How do we do this now? So where... I've got, I'm almost wondering whether this is a sort of a troll puzzle and there's going to be hard, you know, there's going to be sort of one green in the perimeter and the whole thing is going to be. No, it can't actually, that can't be true because this can only, no, most of this column is green, isn't it? Because this can only, this is seeing eight. It could be a nine, in which case it's still only seeing one shaded cell, one more shaded cell in this column. So, Either all of this column is unshaded, or all but one of it is unshaded. So how could this ever be shaded? It can't be, can it? Because if that's shaded, I now know all of these are unshaded, but I also know, because this cannot be a five, that something here is unshaded. And there would be two lots of unshadedness in the perimeter that would, once you connected them, would isolate this cell. So this cell is unshaded. Right, and that means that where the shade, if there is a second shaded cell, uh, what, well, what I mean by that is if this is a nine, and that means one of these cells is shaded, we now know in order to make sure that the greens are contiguous in this column, that we can't put that shaded cell there and have the greens like that, because then once we connect this to its friend, these greens will be isolated from this green, and that won't work. So the only place, if there is a shaded cell in this column, it's here, which means all of those are green. Now, 
what on earth do we do next? Oh, Bobbins. I was hoping I could use this one, but I can't. That being green hasn't corrected the count. That could still be three and those could all be shaded. And the greens could poke in there like that. Um, oh, no, no, that can still be five. How? There's got to be some shadedness in these two cells as well, because whatever this count is, it must be different from this count, which requires there to be a shaded cell, at least one shaded cell in that domino. But it's a little bit less powerful, that observation, because it's not on the perimeter. Right, okay. Gosh, I had 35, how have I had 35 minutes? It feels like I've had about 10 minutes. Um, wow, I'm not, I'm really not sure where I'm meant to look now. Oh, no, I was about to get excited about this cell, but of course it's got a down arrow as well, which could have any number of shaded cells in it. That can't be four anymore because this is green. So it can only reach a count of three for a maximum. Ah, got something, got something. Right, those two arrows. They're counting that string of digits. I think we looked at this earlier. So the, so the count in this cell and the count in this cell, we can effectively ignore these cells because these contribute the same number to both of these. But we need these to have different counts overall. Now this one is definitely seeing a shaded cell there. So if this was shaded, then the count in this and the count in this I'm going to claim would have to be the same number because they are both counting all of purple plus one shaded cell. This would count all of purple plus this shaded cell. So that is unshaded. And if that is unshaded, these two are both shaded because we can't have two by twos of unshaded because of yin yang rules. Good grief. Oh, and that doesn't help me there. Of course it doesn't. Oh, but that means this cell now is not able to be five anymore. So this is now a maximum of four. Which might be interesting. So this digit Oh, hang on, it's a maximum of four, but it's a minimum of three. It's already seeing three. So this is three or four, and this has to be either one or two more than this. So this is either four, five, six, but it can't be seven now, because it can only see a maximum of two more shaded cells than whatever this is. So that's four, five, or six. Here's an interesting point. I'm going to claim this is a shaded cell. Now, is that justified? Well, let's look at this domino. We know that there's a shaded cell, at least one shaded cell in this domino. If we were to decide that this was green, therefore, we know this would have to be shaded in order to make sure this was not equal to five. But now I've got two contiguous, I've got two stretches of green on the perimeter. And once I connect this green to this green, this will be isolated from the rest of the gray. So that's not right. So that is gray. That's almost useless, but, but it, it's still another shaded cell. Um, okay, what we might have to do then is to think about cells like this because what I'm thinking here is how many of these cells can possibly be gray? And it's not as many as you might think at first blush because we can't, we can't put more than four in there because if we did, the fifth one would create a two by two of gray. So that cell is one, two, three or four, I think.
Um, hmm. That cell has to have a different count to this cell, doesn't it? Ah, ah. So this, this is interesting. Yeah, let's compare this one and this one for a moment. Because they obviously both see all of that stretch of digits. And that means for these two to have a different count, this one must see some shaded cells in these three cells. Now it can't see three shaded cells in this string of digits because that would create two by twos of gray, but it could see two. So this is a maximum of two different from this, which means this, but it must, it must always be at least one different from this. So this, this cannot be a, a one then. No, because then that would be a one as well. So this must be at least two. Although I fear that that's not gonna work because I think that's doing something weird with this digit. Um, but let me just think about this. So two, three, four, or maybe five. Five would require this to see though to make those two both shaded. One, two, three. No, that actually that doesn't work. Because where how where do I put the others after that? I could make these two shaded. But now this three needs to be correct, which means I have to shade those two as well. And I'd have a two by two. So that's not five. So this is two, three or four. Ah, right, okay, right. Let's forget, like, let's unbluify these and think about those cells. Now those cells are common between these two counts, which means, which means, how is it the case that this one has a different count to this one overall. Well, the reason is that this one sees this shaded cell, which means if this was shaded, this one would also see an extra shaded cell because it would see the purples plus this, but this would see the purples plus that, and they would have the same count. That's not possible. So that is unshaded. And if that's unshaded, then this cell is now an eight because it's only seeing those cells. Good grief, this is ridiculous. I mean, think about constructing this for a moment because we haven't even started to think about how to grow regions out of this nonsense. It's completely ridiculous that this, I mean, this is like a very complicated logic problem to just plot the, the way that the yin yang works. This, this is where you realize that some of the constructors who are now featuring on Cracking the Cryptic, they are just ludicrously clever people. So, ah, so the other, the corollary of that being eight is that that little one is a one, ah, which doesn't do anything. Um, but, but now there is a relationship, isn't there, between these two cells. We know that the count of this one is exactly one greater than the count of this one. So that can't be four anymore because we need these to be in a relationship of one with each other because this cell gets counted in this count and doesn't get counted in this count. So if this is one, this is two, and then that would need to be three and that can't work. Ah, but, ooh. Yeah, that does not feel right at all. So if that's one, that's two, then that has to be three by Sudoku, but then those two have to be shaded and that one's definitely wrong in that case. So that's nonsense, which means this is not one, 
which I think means this is not 2, because we know that this is 1 greater than this. OK, so we're giving, I see, so we're getting some latitude now. Um, so if that, if that's 2, that's, let's try it with 2. So that's 2, that's 3, and that's 1. Does that work? So now, no, um, oh, maybe actually, maybe it does, because then those two can be shaded. That corrects the count for this. It corrects the count for this, and this is just naturally corrects. It's seeing that one. Ah, that does work. Wow. Okay. So one possibility is that we go two, three, one. Now, the other possibility then is we go three, four. And what would that then be? I feel like I should, well, it's obviously one or two. I do realize that. Um, if this was one, this couldn't get a count of four, could it? Because it can only see because this one is saying it's seeing that one only. So these, these would only have one shaded cell in. And I can only put two shaded cells in here. So this would be incorrect. So this, so right. So this then has to be two, three, four, like this. So either, either this goes two, three, one, or it goes two, three, four. So there's always a two and a three in these cells, which is a little bit interesting to me at least. Um, yeah, I'm available for dinner parties. <laughs> um, so if this is two, this sees one here. Oh, but it's still the case that both of those have to be shaded. So whatever yeah, there's always a difference of two between these two. That's the point. And that's interesting because that means the only way that this can be two greater than this is if both of those are shaded. Wow. Which means that's unshaded. That's unshaded by the power of two by two-ness. And now this is known. This is now a two, I want to say. It sees that one and that one. So that's a two. That might, doesn't actually tell me whether that one's, oh, I tell you what, that's not gray. I was suddenly thinking, I didn't know what this is, but I, I can tell you it's not gray. Because if it's gray, that green is isolated. So that's got to be green. Ah, now here's an interesting thing about yin yang puzzles. Look at that little collection of digits now. What would happen if we had a checkerboard? So what would happen if we made this gray? Well, then you get a problem. Uh, and perhaps the best way to show this might be to just take this problem. Let's put it in. Let's put the checkerboard over here. So if we had double grey and double green like this in a checkerboard in a yin yang, how do you connect these greens together? And the answer is it does not matter. However, whatever journey you take to connect these greens together, you can see you're going to isolate this grey from this grey. You can't then connect the greys together without crossing the greens. So you can never have a checkerboard. And that means this cell cannot be gray. That's green. And yeah, that doesn't seem to do very much, does it? Um, well, although this digit is now getting a little bit more constrained, one, two, three, four, five. That's a maximum of five. It doesn't seem to be able to be five. So that's got to be a two, three or a four. it can't be a one um, so that's two three or four that's two three or four that's six or seven this is now done that's done that's a four it's just seeing four that's his count we can't we can't improve upon it so that's a five or a six that's a six or a seven Um, hmm, okay, 
what do we do now? Now we will use the power of don't know. <laughs> I don't know where to look. We shall. Oh, that can't be two. It sees a two here. So that's three or four now. At the moment, it has a count of one. So if this was a four, three of these would have to be grey. This is five or six. Hang on, how can how can that be six now? That can't be six, can it? I've got four in the column. So if this is six, I need to see two. Oh yes, of course it can. There's no. I was I was getting myself confused because I've been thinking about down here where we had to be concerned about two by twos but here there's no restriction on both of these being grey so that can be a six bobbins right okay um ah i know what we're going to do what about that digit because those two are looking at each other and they therefore have commonality So that must mean, let me just think about that. So these are common to the count of this and the count of this. So that means that this domino must be different from this domino in terms of the number of shaded cells. Now this is interesting because this definitely has a count of two shaded cells in it. So that means that these cannot both be shaded because if they were both shaded, the count of this and the count of this would be the same. But here is something that you can't make both of those unshaded either, because that would create a two by two in green. So that means one of these is shaded and one of these is unshaded, which means that the count of this cell is one less than the count of this cell, because this one sees two shaded beyond the purple this sees one shaded beyond the purple so this it sees one less than this so what is this then it sees two at the moment it sees three up here but it can't be a three because then that would require this to be a four so it's got, to, and it can't be a four because that's going to break that. So it must be, it must be a five, mustn't it? Because if it's a six, that needs to be a seven. So I think this has to be five and this has to be six and therefore that's seven. Wow. This is just stunning, isn't it? It's stunning. Now, but that must mean, that means both of these are grey because that's what we were just thinking about. I was worried about making both of these grey because I was thinking about I was in two by two world, which I'm not. So now this is five. One, two, three, four. One of those is five. This is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is seven, which is, oh, that's huge. Right, because I'm only seeing six. So that's got to be grey. So both of these turned out to be grey in the end. So now what's that? One, two, three, possibly four. So it's not two anymore. So now I've got a three, four pair here. So the rest of this row has got to be two, six, eight, and nine. And some of these have got arrows in them. That's got a six in its column. Uh, ah. Well, I'll tell you something, that can't be two because it already sees three using its arrows. So that's an eight or a nine, which means most of this column is, is gray. Um, it sees two. And even if this isn't eight, that means it needs to see six here. It sees one here. So at least five of these, uh, at least five of these seven cells are gray.
What about that one? That one is just a single arrow looking downwards. So even if everything was shaded, that would only reach a count of seven. So it's not eight or nine. So that's just two or six. Okay. If that's four, don't I run into a problem with this now? And two by twoing. If that's four, three of these four have to be have to be oh you could do that three of this these four have to be shaded but you have to avoid making two by two so you'd have to have those three as shaded which makes that whoa, whoa, whoa. right that doesn't work right that's not four and that is for a horribly difficult reason but let me explain look at this column now how are we going to make it work well because we've got this stripe we could put, the only way we can complete this four is with a string like this. But now, this is almost a two by two. So we've got to make that green. But then we know one of these, we, we know that this was one of each. So this has to be gray. And now that means this count is a four. So we get two fours in this row and that won't work. So this is a three. And this is a four. And if this is a four, now we know this is gray in order to make this count work. So that gets gray. That therefore is green by the logic we did earlier. And, and we've done the perimeter. We have actually got the whole perimeter figured out now in terms of its coloring, which feels like a massive step forward. Um, right. But, hmm, but now, how are we going to make this? Hang on, how can that be three now? No, that can't be three. Maybe this could never be three, but I've just seen it can't be three because these two cells can't be gray. So that's not three. Oh, I think that's, I think that's all, we already knew that. I just hadn't, not, hadn't removed the pencil mark. So it's either one, I'm trying to remember what the order was. I think it was one, two, and then three, or two, three, four, I think. I would love to know which of those was correct. Ah, hang about, this cell is now interesting. This, ah, oh, wow, yeah, okay, what's that digit? I don't know exactly what it is, but it's certainly under pressure because in this column, look, this top clue is telling us it sees three shaded cells in this string of digits but that that is it, it is itself also shaded so in this column there are four shaded cells that are seen by the vertical arrows in this clue so that gets four from there but horizontally it gets five six seven but it can't be a seven so it must be It must be an eight, I think. Because it could be a nine. But if it's a nine, isn't the implication of that that both of those have to be shaded? So, for, I mean, from a Sudoku perspective, it could be a nine. But that makes both of those shaded because it gets four vertically. It can't be seven. And it can't see five horizontally because that double shades that. So that has to be eight, I think. But the interesting thing about that is that saying that not only does it see four vertically, it must see four horizontally. So one, two, one of these is shaded now. 
Yeah, so the fact this couldn't be a 7 tells us this number. Because one of these is shaded, this one of these is shaded, that's a 2. And if that's a 2, that's a 3 and that's a 4. This is quite extraordinary. <laughs> so now these cells are 1, 6 and 9 to complete the row. And that's not a 6. And now one, so now one of these is shaded by, so I don't know which way round that goes, but we've got another thing here that we had up there. Look, one of these is shaded one. Of, I've just, I've gone over an hour. I've gone over an hour. That literally feels like 10 minutes to me. Good grief. Um, I was expecting this to be a long video though, so I'm, I'm not embarrassed yet that I've gone over an hour. Um, Okay, so what do we do now? That cell is a bit restricted now because that cell is counting the number of greys in there. So it can't be more than five. And that cell is looking at these. So yes, so this cell sees the same thing this cell does and it sees this cell itself. So this is one more than this, which means it cannot be one. So that's two, three, four, five, or six. Now it can't be, by Sudoku it can't be four, five, or six. So this is two or three. And because this is one more than this, this is one or two, I think. So most of this row is green. I think that's what this is telling us. Uh, hmm, okay. It could be time to start doing some Sudoku soon because this region at the bottom must include that cell, mustn't it? Because Yeah, ooh, here's something interesting. Right, right, in fact, I'm not gonna look here. I'm gonna look at this column because I've got eight green cells there. If that is the ninth cell in a region, then I can't put six in column one anywhere. So that is not a possible configuration. And yet that would be forced to be a configuration if, uh, let's use the line tool, if that is a true border, then this would have, the only way that can build a nine cell region is like that. And that, with that is that fails because of the six problem. So actually that is part of the same region, which must be part of that region. It would be rather nice if, that, if this had been a three or something, then I would have known what this was. So now that we can run that logic exactly the same way in reverse, how could that be a line segment in the puzzle? Well then this one, would join down with his friend the four to create the nine cell region. And this two or three couldn't be placed in column one. So that doesn't work either. So that tells us that that is a line set or that this is part of the same region. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right, so now we know that this one region and this four are in different regions. So that means that the four region, because if we try and join them up now like this, that's a 10 cell region according to the count I just did. Let me just double check that. Yeah, that's 10 cells. So now this four could take as many as those cells, but it still hasn't reached a count of nine. So it must keep going this way. And look, if I could get this into the same region as this, then I would know what this is. And this, right, by the same logic, that this must extend because this one region 
can take three more cells from this column. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's only six cells. So that cell here is green. Oh, this is so clever. Oh my goodness me. Right. Now look at this three clue. That requires two of these three to be gray and anything con contiguous is going to create a two by two. So we must do that. That must be green in order to prevent a two by two. That must get out because all greens must connect. Holy moly. So that's very exciting. Ah, yeah. Now I'm going to carry on going with my this region. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It needs more cells. That's got to be green. So that extends to there. This region at the bottom has got to come to here. Then it could flood upwards or continue. Um, that's got to join up here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right. Here is something that. I think is fair. How could this be a line segment? Let's think about the implications of that because now this 82 region needs to grow. So this is green. But this 4 region needs to reach a count of 9 cells. Well it can get 6 cells in this column and 2 here. So this has to grow. But the implication of that is that both of those cells are green and that creates a 2 by 2 in green and that's not going to work. So actually, this is not a line segment, which means that therefore this joins to this. I've now got a two in this region, which corrects the count of this to three. Now I said that was one different from this, so that is now a two. Because yeah, and that's, that, that feels like a correct logic because they're both counting all of those cells. <laughs> um, so now, the rest of this column needs ones, twos, eights, oh, ones, twos, eights, and nines, and that looks difficult for eight, because eight can't go in those two, because I've got an eight in the corner. Wow, so if I can join this two into this region, I'd know that was a one, nine pair. Then this would be a two, eight pair. Okay, I don't really see what's wrong with that, to be honest. Um, sorry, I don't know. I've just, I've just clammed up. It's because I don't know what to do. Um, now, come on, Simon, use your brain. Oh, I know what I can do here. That is a one now. It's only just counting that cell. So this is two or three. If it's three, those have to all be shaded and these two would have to be green. This is not a one anymore by Sudoku. Um. Hmm. That's not a two anymore by Sudoku. I think I'm running out. I mean, how does this solve uniquely from here? It's just ridiculous. I mean, I basically I'm not far off having used all the clues, all of the arrow clues. Oh, I haven't got anything in that one. Oh, sorry, no, maybe I'm maligning uh, or understating how many clues I've actually used. This one is clearly seeing two, but could see up to another five. So this could be a seven, which is rather a lot. 
if it was a seven, no, okay, it's not a seven. Because if it's a seven, all of these are gray and these greens will be isolated from the world. So actually, it's got a maximum count of six. So it's six, five, can't be four, can't be three because it's in the region with three and can't be two. And we know it's at least two because it sees two. So is that five or six really? That's quite surprising because that's quite a lot of, yeah, that's at least, at least three of these have to be shaded. Four being shaded would be a massive restriction on these greens. How could that work? No, no, I'm going to reject that. I do not think that can be a six. Because if that's a six, one, two, I've got to make four of these five cells grey in a way that doesn't cut off any greens. But remember, one of these is grey. So let's just, I don't think it matters which way around we do this. Let's just do it this way round. Let's imagine it was this way round. And now we're, set up, we're setting ourselves the task of putting four greys into these and not isolating any greens. So clearly that has got to not be grey. Because if that's grey, I've isolated this green. Now the rest of this has to be grey and these greens are isolated. And that logic must work um, sort of the other way round, mustn't it? So if instead we make this one green and this grey, then this clearly has to be green or this green's isolated. And now all those have to be gray and these two get isolated. So this is right. Okay, well, it's right and it's wrong. This is not able to be six. That is a five. And I sort of feel, and this might be incorrect, that that's gonna make this cell gray. Because if this cell was green, I think I now run into exactly the same problem with having to make three of these gray and with, with one of these being gray as well. I'm always gonna be cutting off. I'm always gonna be cutting off greens. It's the same logic. So that now is gray to avoid that logic applying. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ah, bobbins. I was hoping to get to grow this, this region here, but I can't. So, where now? Where on earth do I look now? There must be a weak point in this puzzle somewhere. And it just doesn't seem to be, or to me at least, to, it doesn't feel very restricted. This arrow is the only arrow I've not filled in a digit on. Let's check this one. So it sees two. Oh, actually, okay, it can't be massive, can it? One, two. Oh yeah, yeah, no, it really can't be massive. It sees two there and there it can't be three it can be four but only if those two very specifically were gray and it can't be five because then three grays here would cause two by two problems so either this is two and all of these are green which would be massive because then i'd have a gray region at the top of the grid which is a luxury that we haven't even been close to yet or this is a four in which case those two are gray so this is always green and if both of those are gray no that doesn't work it doesn't work right if both of those are gray how do i get how do i get this clue to work because I've got to put another gray in here. It would have to go there and this green's isolated. So that's nonsense. 
So that means that this is two. And if that's two, we're away because now these cells all have to be green because we've already reached our count of greys in those two cells. This is massive. So now I've got a region. The top of the grid to here must be a nine cell region that doesn't have a one in it yet. And that one must go there. Wow. So this is, this is it. We've got, a, we've got a region here. Uh, right, that cell's not a two now by Sudoku. So that cell, the, the, the two in this top gray region goes here, which is on an arrow. So, oh, ah, nearly, nearly. Oh, that is a two now. That's a two and that must be gray in order to make this clue work. But also this column now has an awful lot of green in it because it can only have one more gray in it. So a lot of this is green. Hmm. Can't see what that means. Um, can that join there or is there some problem with that? That doesn't work actually weirdly. This is not part of this region. Not for a Sudoku reason, I don't think. There might be a Sudoku reason, but that's not the reason I've seen. If these join together in a region, then these three cells have to join this region, but this is already a seven cell region. So that would make a 10 cell region and that's not gonna work. So this two and this one are in different regions which admittedly is probably not the most profound thing we've ever discovered in our lives. Um, so let's just take a stop, take stock of what we know. This column has an awful lot of greys to put into it. This row has an awful lot of greens to put into it. This column has an awful lot of greens to put into it. And this row has a relatively high number of greys to put into it. Which presumably means there's some sort of weak spot here <laughs> related to those things. We can't do any Sudoku with, oh, hang on. I want to double click digits. Ones, yeah, twos got relatively oh we have got quite a lot we've got six twos in the grid right okay where does two go in the bottom row I think it can only go here let's just just check that again it can it can only go there that's a two so this is not two, this is not two, this is not two. Ah, this is lovely. Right, now that cell cannot be in a region with this cell. Those would be in the same region. So this has got to extend one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh. Is it really possible for this to be gray? I don't know. But that is definitely, this is a separate region. So those two are in the same region. Um, uh, I can't quite see what that means. It means we've got to put five in the bottom row. Where's that going? It can't, can't repeat in its own region. So it's in one of those two cells, along with this digit, which must also appear in the bottom row. So those cells have got to be from one, five and nine, and that's not a one by Sudoku. So this is nearly interesting. Now, if, if that digit Yeah, okay, if that digit is in this region, this has to be a six. 
because it must, by the law of leftovers, these three digits are those three digits, and therefore this one is mapping to that one, and it would have to be a six. But if, on the other hand, this takes this cell instead, what's the constraint then? Nothing, I don't think. Okay, all right, not sure about that. So let us instead wonder about... Well, this feels difficult to me. I can see that if that's gray, then I've got to avoid a checkerboard. So that turns gray as well. So that isolates one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this would then become a region, which means that this one, two, three, four, five, six, we know it doesn't join here. Is there anything wrong with this? The answer seems to be no. Um, no, okay, I can't see what's wrong with that. So this could be gray. Wow, okay, blimey. <laughs> Where do we look next? Um, This column has got, what, okay, one more gray to place in this column. Ah, oh no, okay. oh, hang on a minute. Let me think about that. Let me think about that. So that's going to lock in a region here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right, okay, this cell is not grey for a horribly difficult reason. If that was grey, all of these are green, which means this is grey, and we've got to connect this region up. So all of these would turn gray. And I think that those cells added together are 10 cells. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. They are 10 cells. So that does not work. That is green. So I suspect there's more we can do in this column. That's my feeling. But let me think about this. Okay. Uh, I can put one more gray cell down here. And then the rest of it has to be green. finding it very hard to visualize where the problem is with that. So if those, if those were green, I'm always ending up with this cell being forced to be gray if I make this green because of the uh, avoiding a two by two rule. So I'm always ending up with sort of a region that has to come round like this, which is a seven cell region, which can never join up with this region, which is a bit weird. So when this is green, I've got to allow this magnet to get out. When this is green, I've got to allow the magnet to get out. Yes, okay, so I think that cell is green. Let me show you why. If this cell's gray, those three cells are green. In fact, let's do it. Those three cells are now green. But now this is gray, this is gray, and this is gray. And therefore, how do I build a region here? This, this region needs to connect to something, so it's going to come to this cell. But this cell needs to connect something. So they're both ending up in this cell. 
which means that gets to be a region and that's our 10 cell region again, which is wrong. So that cell is green. Ah, uh, what's this one? Oh no, this, ah, that's not what I wanted there. I wanted that to be, I've got two greys to find in this row. Two greys. Really don't think we know very much at all about which way they go, do we? Um, Okay, okay, sorry. So the, I'm sure there's going to be a, a, a simple, not a simple, but like a relatively straightforward way of working this out. I'm just not having the inspiration I need to, probably getting tired after one hour, 25 minutes. Um, okay, so how do we make more progress from here? An awful lot of this column, at least one, two, three, possibly four. So at least four of these cells are gray. At least four, possibly five. Right, okay, so how come, how could that ever be green? That can't be green, because then I have to make all of these grey. One, two, three, four, five, six, so yes, I have to make all of these um, grey. And now how does this three get out? Remember, the, avoid a two by two. So let me do this slowly. All of these turn grey, this including this one. This is now grey because we have to avoid a two by two and this is I've trapped a green region here. So that's not right. So that cell is grey. Right, here's something. Here is something. Okay, so we're, earlier on we worked out these two weren't in the same region and that's because it, it caused a problem down here with the 10 cell region. So if these two are not in the same region, how could this not be green? If this is gray, this region, this two region cannot join to this region. So it needs to get out. So it's gonna to have to come here. But this region can't exist. It's not a nine cell region, even if it takes all of these cells. So it has to come out to here. And that means we get this pattern and both of these are green. And we've got loads of two by twos going on and that's not gonna work. So what we can say is this cell has to be green and it has to be part of this two. So this is a region starting to grow. Now I reckon we might have to do that again for this cell. Um, let's think about that. If this cell was now gray, this region has to take this cell and it's the same logic. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, it's the same logic. So that's also impossible. That's got to be green and part of the two region. Now, oh, now it might not work again because it looks now we could go in here, unfortunately. So if we try this again, no, we haven't, we haven't penned ourselves in. Rotten, rotten thing. Um, so we can't quite finish it along those lines. Ah, right. Okay. Um, so what is it then? What is it we're meant to do here? I'd love to know which direction this went in. Right, which clues have we now? I've thought a bit about this one. I can tell that an awful lot of this column now has to be the same color. So if that was green, all of the, if that's green, all of these turn gray. 
this then would join up here. That would be a seven cell region. Hmm, don't know. One of these is grey, one of these is green. Hmm, okay. I've got to find two more greys in this line, haven't I? So, and that's out of four cells. So two of these four cells are actually green as well. Do I want that to be green? I don't know. I'm not sure. Or do I want to look at this column again? There's only one grey to put in this column. So if that's the grey, all of these turn green. Let's just have a look at that for a moment. If that's grey, all of these turn green. And now this has to join up with so it has to be a one, two, three, four. That has to be a nine cell region like that. But we wouldn't know what this was. Don't actually see what's wrong with that, to be honest. Um, hang on, hang on. Maybe we can disprove the alternative then. So if, on the other hand, this is green, we looked at this a bit earlier. I th I have a feeling it creates the wrong count over here with this magnet region again. Because one of these is now grey and one of these is green. So if this is green, that is definitely grey. This is definitely grey because we need to get this to a size of nine. That gets us to a seven cell region, which cannot now join to this. Ah, that's it. That's it. Because th this seven cell region can't join to that. And that means we need to get both of these regions out through this column. We can pick up one cell here, we're making this an eight cell region, but we still need this cell to be gray. Whereas this one also needs to get out. And only one of them could get out because I can't make both of these gray. One of these has to be green. So one of these gets blocked off. Let's make it that one and show you the problem. That's going to connect these regions. The alternative is that I allow the magnet to escape. But now this cell has to be green. And this is isolated. So this is it. This is it. It's beautiful. So actually, let's come back to this digit. Well, not digit. This cell. This cell has to be grey. And therefore, these two cells are, are green. And therefore, these have to be grey to create a region. And this region, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, is we have a region. That is a region of a sort of funny question marky shape. Whoa, 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 whoa. Funny question marky shape region in the middle of the grid. Um there might be some opportunities to do some Sudoku stuff with that. Perhaps. I'd love to know what this was. <laughs> um if that's grey. What's that doing to this region? One, two, oh, no, 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 this is magic. This is magical. Look, uh, this region, this seven cell region at the bottom is now seems to be penned in. So I can build it. I know what this looks like. It looks like an H. Uh, it's not, it's gotta be nine cells. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's now nine cells. So this region, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, bobbins. It could just go all the way along there. Or it could dip down through here. We don't know which it does. If it dips, ah oh no, we don't know what it does. Okay, but what we can presumably do now is to think about these cells. Um, oh, the simple thing to do, in fact, is to note those cells cannot be twos and threes. So where am I putting twos and threes in this column? The answer is in this region, and there's a two here. So this is a two, this is a three, those these squares are now six, seven, and nine. We're going to get this digit. That's got to be a one. Wow, 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 wow. Six, seven, nine. Imagine, imagine how Jesper must have felt constructing this. Look, like when you got to this point, 
it must be so exciting. I have to be thinking, I can, maybe I can, I can actually do this, and it will, it will fit together. Um, okay, so now, now what? Now what's the next step? So now this is correct and, and done. We've got is it this region? Is there something going on with that region? I've got to put a five in that region. Five's got to go in one of those two cells. No, this grey region has to get out, but I think it's got opportunities to do that. It's got two ways of exiting from the little cul-de-sac it's found itself in. So, okay, there must be something else. Ah, this two clue now, I've got one of them. So one of these is grey, exactly. Two of them are green. Ah, I've got five here. I've not thought about this for a while. One, oh, okay. I've got a count of, th oh. Hang on. This has got a count. One, two, three. Oh. Okay, sorry. Let me just think about this. I've got a count of five. So I've got to put two greys into these three cells. Now, how could those both be grey? If those are both grey, then this green cell, how's it ever getting out of the corner? Because one of these is grey, so it's getting penned in whichever one of these is grey. So those are not both grey, that's grey. Now, does that tell me which of these is grey? Or which of these is grey? Yeah, what, so one of these is in, one of these is out. It's the same as this. Oh no, that two, that two arrows going the wrong way. Um, oh, okay, this cell now, which is a green cell, because one of these is green only, it's building a region vertically. It must be going up here. I don't actually think that's very interesting. Um, so one of the, oh, I don't really know how to look. Yeah, okay, that's how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do, draw little boundaries. One of these is gray, one of these is green, one of they, these is gray, one of these is green. Which presumably means something. What about here then? I need oh, one more gray in these cells. Oh yeah, and the other thing I've not thought about for a little while is this clue, which requires an awful lot of an awful lot of greys in this column. So if that's green, ah, I can't quite get my head around this. What at the moment I've got one, two, three four, possibly five. So at least three of these four are gray, at least three, possibly all of them. What about this one then? Can we, can we somehow say something about how this needs to grow? So if it comes this way, then, then it's blocked in here, isn't it? So then it's got to go up in one of these positions. That would be gray. Have to go up like that. 
Oh no, it can't, no, it can't go up like that. That's gonna break the, oh right, okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. This cell's ability to grow is impinged upon because it can't come up this chute because there's too many grays required in this column. So how does this three collect its friends? How does it connect to its friends? It cannot come through this, this tube here because then this eight clue is impossible. So it must come up through this tube. Those, and therefore these three cells are in the same region. Which is maybe interesting. So now, oh yeah, so now this two clue, now that's a boundary. One, one of these is green, one of these is gray. But we still don't know how this two grows. Mary, Mary, quite contrary, how does your green garden grow? I don't know. I've got a horrible feeling it could be Sudoku ones. Let's just take a stare at this for a moment or two in case there's something. I mean, I haven't pencil marked sort of these cells, one of five options, just because <laughs> I'm allergic to doing that. Um, twos. Oh. oh, I've got eight twos in the grid. Oh, for goodness sake. Right, where's the other two? Is it, I'm not put two in this row. Uh, two is going there. Oh, good grief. Right, that's massive. That's massive. Because now this... Oh, good grief. Right, okay. How does this two grow? Oh, this is, <laughs> this is just so clever. Wow. Okay, how does this two grow? Now, the answer is we don't quite know. It can come along this row for sure. And that would get it to a count of six if it, if it came along there. We know it, we know it doesn't join up with the one in the corner. So it could get a count of six. It could get this cell, that's a seventh, but it can't run into these twos. So it's gonna to have to come down eight and it's gonna to have to come into the three. Whatever happens, it has to hit the three. So now I've got a seven cell region in this column. Oh, the, the, yeah, now, now what cell is this in? Because, because that seven cell region means that's green. So now this is a region. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that, that means I can put a six here by Sudoku. I've got to put a six in this column. It can't repeat, which means that's an eight or a nine. I've got to put one in this region. It's got to go there. And if there's a one there, we know it's corresponding to that being a one, don't we? By the law, yes, I've got to put one in this region now. Yeah, in fact, everything's getting forced. Everything's getting forced because this region's only got eight cells. So it must take that cell as its ninth. And that's, we know that's going to be the six that goes, that can't otherwise go in the region. So that's a six. Oh my goodness me. Oh my goodness me. This could be it. Now, now, now look, this has to be five. This has to be one correspond with this one. These digits are now three, four, seven, and nine. Well, uh, three, four, seven, nine. That's not three. That's not four. Oh, Bobbins, I knew I shouldn't have started this, this, this <laughs> profligate um, pencil marking. This six means that's a nine by Sudoku. So this is a one. Now these digits, maybe three, four, eight, nine. Mm, no, no, I'm going to resist pencil marking that just for fear of this getting very cluttered very quickly. Um, okay, but now this is a seven cell region. So it could reach as far as this cell, but it can't reach as far as this cell. So this cell's region must join its friends over here. So that is a region, one, two, three, that's up to seven now. 
So it cannot join this region. Because if it if it starts to come down now, if, if we made that that link, it would have to hit this and become a 10 region. So it must take another cell. But its last cell is either this one or this one. We, we don't know which. Or I don't think we know which. Um, okay. Where, okay, here's a question. Where does this region get its one from? Because it hasn't got a one in this column. It can't be that cell because there's a one looking at that cell. And it can't be, so it's either got to be something in this column, and I don't think it can get to this column, or it's got to be this cell. How does it get to that column? It can't. There's no way because we've got these X's that it can't move through. So that's got to be it. That's got to be green. It's got to be in this region. And that's that's done. That's done the puzzle. It's done the puzzle because now this region, I've got one, two, three, four. I need four more at least. So that's an eight. That's a nine. All of this turns grey. And therefore that's green by yin yang that's green by yin yang two three four this looks like it's a region here actually i'm not certain about that but one two three four five six seven eight yeah i think that's going to join this with that one two three four five six seven eight nine Oh, I see. Yes, no. The simple way to do it is to notice that this region needs another cell now. And that's got to be there. So that's a region. And that forces this to take this cell as its ninth cell. So that's a region. Which means that now we've got this green cell at the region at the bottom, which is of size 9 at the moment. So it can't grow any more. Which means that cell must be grey. And that, I think somewhat extraordinarily is the shape of the regions done. Isn't that extraordinary? That's a nine by Sudoku. Where does nine go in this region? Where does no <laughs> where does nine go in that region? I'll tell you where it goes there. How many nines have I got now? <laughs> Let's keep going. Oh that can't be nine. Um, let's keep thinking about nines for a moment. Nine in this three region can't go there and can't go there. So it's in one of those two cells. I'm not sure whether I can limit it further, but that means that's not a nine at the bottom of the grid. That's not a nine at the bottom of the grid. That's not a nine at the bottom of the grid, which means that is a nine. Which means that where does 9 go in the question mark region? It's got to go there, I think. Which means 9 goes here. It means 9 is not there anymore. Oh, Bobbins, I thought that was going to go all the way through. That would have been so exciting. Uh, how many 9s have I got, though? I've got 7. There's one I've got to place over here. Right, where's the other one? Oh, wouldn't it be awful if I find that I've made a mistake? No, uh, okay, nine in this column I've not put in. I think it's got to go here by Sudoku. So that's a nine, which means that's a nine. And I've done all the nines. There we go. So it's possible that this is not going to be a monstrous, um, a monstrous irregular Sudoku now. I'd be very pleased. Um, I'm still under two hours. I'm still under two hours. That's not awful. Um... Okay. Where should we look next? Is there somewhere obvious that we need to focus upon? Possibly. Um, I'm trying to spot law of leftovers type things and failing miserably. Okay, there is something. What about those digits? What are they? 
What are they? Yes, okay. I think if we look at these cells, one, six, eight, and nine can't go in those cells in, in this three shape region. So one, six, eight, and nine have to occupy those cells. We've already got the nine, so this must be a one, six, eight, triple. And six in that triple must go there, look, by Sudoku of all things. So now, ah, now six in this funny shape region is not in those cells or those cells. So it's in one of, ah, so it's in one of those cells, which means that six is not here. That's seven, that's six. So what do we ask now? Perhaps about six in the question mark, which has to be ah, one of those two cells, I think. I'm not sure if we can do better than that. Oh, well, that's quite good because that's looking up there and giving us a six here, which is at least a little bit interesting. Um, so how many sixes have we got now? Lots, seven. So we've only got two more to place. Oh, I see, but it looks like we have an option there. So we have an X wing of sixes left in those cells. What I could do actually, you know, which might be sensible is to get rid of the lines through the regions because we now know the shape of the regions. So it might make it easier to scan if we get rid of the, the green lines maybe. Boom, 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 like that. Oh, and I want to do the the edge down there to make it look oh and the edge up here to make it look like it's symmetrical that makes me feel better okay now more sudoku where do we look next what about those cells three fives and eights mm, three five eight that's not able to be eight that's not able to be three that's quite capable well, it's not able to be five actually so we managed to limit those to one, well, effectively binary positions, but that's not quite good enough, is it? Um, oh, I've got a one here, therefore that seems to have to be an eight. That gets me an eight and a one here, which is better. So these are now no longer eight, which makes that cell an eight by Sudoku. And I get myself a three, four pair in column nine. Maybe I double click my eights now and see what we can say about those. I have got six of them. So, is that good enough? The answer is, I don't know. Nearly. Eight in this column is really restricted. It's in one of two places. Eight, no, eight's got a few, I think eight's got a few options in this column unless I'm missing a trick. And then eight in this column has got two options again. I think it's those two cells, bobbins. Okay, so maybe it's not eights that we have to look at. It's going to be some other naughty digit. What about this column? I've got lots in that column, three, five, and seven. So that's a five or a seven. This is, ah, that's a five or a seven. So the threes might be, yes. So that gets me a three at the bottom of the grid and a four, seven pair here. Let's double click our threes and see if we can see anything interesting with those. Um, not immediately. Or am I, am I, doing myself a disservice. Yeah, I am a bit actually. Where does three go in the question mark? Well, this three and this three tell us it goes in one of those two cells, which is actually pointing at that cell and making that an eight. And that means this is a five, which I think means that's the eight in this one. It also means this is a three, but let's just check where eight goes in this region now. Yes, it has to go here, which takes the pencil mark of a six, which means that's the unwinding of the six X wing. And now these two squares have to be four and seven. 
which gives us an x with on fours look so four in the three region now can't be in this cell must be in one of those two um threes and fours oh this must be about to tumble it must please tumble now please tumble um Please tumble before my computer keels over with the length of this video. Gosh, imagine if I imagine if I had a crash now. I don't think about that. Don't think about it. Um, four, five, seven into this square. So this is four, five. This is four, five, or seven. Bobbins. I think everything's possible there, isn't it? All right, this column that's got a lot of real estate in it. Fours, fives, and sevens. Let's put the options in and see what we can get rid of. Yes, we know that the fours are an X-wing in those cells, so these can't be fours. So that's got to be the four. This becomes a five, seven pair, which is in this region, which means we still need to put one and three in this region. So that's got to be one, and that's got to be three. How many ones have we got? Loads, all of them. Okay, that would have been a quicker way to work everything out. So this threes now, We've got seven threes, so we must be able to get the rest of the threes, surely. Where do we need to still put threes? We, ah, we need a three in this row, and it can't go there, so it's going to have to go here. So three, four, four, seven go into the grid. That fixes the seven, five pair. This is a five by Sudoku. This is getting exciting. Um, we need, what do we need in this region? Five, seven, and eight. That square has to be a seven then. And that's got to be the eight. Let's double click the eights. That's all the eights done. Um, and this seven gives us the seven and the four at the bottom. That knocks seven out of here. So this column needs threes, fours, and fives, and that has to be three. And that has to be five, and that has to be four, therefore. Which means that's seven, that's four, please. It does look right, it looks right with the seven there. It does look right. It's, I don't think I've got a repeated digit anywhere. Good grief. Um, do I dare click tick? I'm gonna do it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow okay that was very 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 hard <laughs> two hours um <sighs> jesper take a bow how did you come up with this i mean that i have no i actually have no idea how you make a puzzle of that complexity because even once you have the the thought about it the start was really difficult to sort of pinpoint how the the, the edges worked but even once you did that imagine you've embedded clues that allow you to build all the sudoku regions work the yin yang out and then do sudoku off the regions you get it is it is absolutely the correct adjective to use genius about that that is something quite exceptional one of the greatest one of the greatest puzzles frankly that there has ever been made full stop and if you think you can come up with a better one i look forward to the comments um, because i think you'd have to go some way to justify a puzzle that is more impressive than that wow wow well thank you so much for watching if you're still with me now this is a movie length episode by all accounts and with that i shall go and have my lunch <laughs> thanks for watching back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Mm -hmm.